Well, hello folks, I'm Ellie Little and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. Where we take a look at these markets and we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened today and what does it tell us about the coming ones. We do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube. It's under the channel, Ellie Little. As far as what happened today, let's take a look at these markets and uh, look at the ending numbers. You know, last night we were talking about the fact that the market seemed to be uh, you know, playing a different tune than we were and that we needed to get on the right sheet. And uh, today the market continued higher other than a couple you know, small pullbacks in Asia. It was pretty much higher across the board again. And this is despite Apple not being able to move, despite the biotechs being sold each day, despite the NDX lagging the general market, general market keeps going up. Almost another percent today. Dow Jones up almost a percent. The NDX, NASDAQ only up a little less than half a percent. And the Russell up almost a percent as well. EEM up uh, another percent, all 3.6% higher. That thing just keeps climbing. And we have uh, another big rally in the oil stocks. That's four days running now, about 15% at this point, and getting to the point where they're not looking nearly as cheap as they were. Uh, overseas in Asia, in uh, Europe, uh, the DAX and the CACs, neither one of those wanted to pull back, even though they tried. And so you, you essentially have a very, very sticky market going on here. If we look at the S&P 500, keeps climbing up to the swing point high now. It's, uh, volume tails off a little bit. You're coming up to the test here. You know, you're getting to the point now where it's going to get much more difficult. And I, and I know this has been a heck of a run, and yeah, it can go farther. But what I'm talking about now is now you're getting to the point where you're coming into this area. Right, and this, other than what's above it at the 45 level, right, this is the the meat of the resistance. So, so you make the push, you continue to make the push, and you're coming up into the meat of what should be resistance on the way up. And uh, I don't see those beaten down sectors driving it. What's going to have to drive it is other sectors that have so far uh, not participated. But anyway, you're coming back to the swing point high. You're close to it. You're going to test it tomorrow. Uh, Dow Jones already over that area and pushing higher. It's pushing back up to the retest regens. And if we look at the, um, not the S&P, but if we look at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ is trailing. And so what, what's kind of fascinating to me is that if we go back and we think about the bearish retest regenerates that exist out here, they're up in this, um, and I'd have to pull up the charts, uh, you know, my cube to see it, but they're up in this area, right? And so somewhere around, you know, 4,900, 4,990 or so on the NASDAQ is where that is. It's a little bit higher than that swing point high that we got to. And look at how this one's trailing now versus the S&P 500. And what does that mean? Well, to me, what it means is that both of these are going to get up here about the same time. You know, that, that push up is going to come in at about the same time frame. And so they're both going to do the test roughly at the same time. If you go back to the S&P 100, the S&P 500, it's about 2045. Uh, you're pressing about 2017 now, 2013.50 on the close. So both of them look as if they're going to get to the meat of the resistance, the first test of that bearish breakdown. That probability of it pushing prices lower is extremely high. And so that test, when it comes, looks like it's going to, uh, it's going to be a hard thing to get over. And it's going to be even harder if this thing doesn't take a break before it gets there. And if you look at the earnings calendar, right, for it to get to this area without any kind of a break, what does that do? That sets up a high probability it is going to retrace. And then, of course, it would be a retest, regen off of this swing point high if it does that. But, you know, the way this thing is setting up, it doesn't want to take a break. It looks like it wants to shoot straight up there. You got all the meat of the earnings. I was looking at them this afternoon starting on Tuesday. So you still got two more days this thing can push. 
and uh, you know just may do exactly that. If we look at the Russell, and on the Russell here, we've got the same sort of push going. Uh, Russell's coming up. It, now the Russell's lagging, but the Russell's going to try to get up into those highs. Switching back to the S&P one more time, and although I don't want to belabor this too much, the most bullish scenario would have been a pullback here, right? Because then you would have got some sort of a rest, and you could have got a push that could take you up higher and take you potentially uh, deeper into this resistance that's going to be up here. But instead of that, what we instead got was he simply got the straight push without any break. And so if it continues to push, right, the probabilities of breaking over where all the sellers are going to be sitting is just not very good. And so that's why I was saying, you know, the, the more bullish scenario would have been a pullback. That was the more likely scenario. It didn't play out that way. Last night, you know, I said we weren't on the same page as the market. We needed to, uh, you know, swallow our pride, so to speak, and get back on the same page. That's what we did today uh, in the trading room. That's what we did um, in general. And that's what you have to do, right? You're not always going to be correct. But what's important is to get correct. Moving on, uh, sectors. Sector is going to blow away all the swing points uh, and, and turn sideways in most cases. Uh, even, even biotech, which can't seem to get anything going. Biotech keeps getting bought every time it dips. Uh, the semis are getting ready to break over. The XLB broke over today. Uh, the XLE had already broken over and extends again. The industrials break over. Financials are close. Technology has been lagging because Apple and the others have been lagging, but even it is at that swing point high and going to get over it. Uh, let's see, 41.40, we close at uh, 41.30, so it's right at it. And just on down the line, right? It's the same all the way down. Now, I want to turn my attention or your attention real quickly to uh, the earnings. Last night I mentioned a couple. I didn't get, uh, I didn't get back to them, but I am going to go to them tonight. Uh, Adobe had already uh, reported like three weeks ago. They reported back here. They came out day before, uh, not not today, but yesterday, and said that uh, you know their their revenues are going to be less than they thought. That's uh, like three weeks after reporting. They get hammered. Volumes not as great, right? And so this thing's going to hold up here. And if you look at them on a longer term perspective here, they got uh, not a bad situation and should be able to hold price for now. But that's Adobe. If we look at uh, another one that reported uh, yesterday was Yum Brands. Yum Brands gets hammered. Today does an under over. This thing's going to bounce a little bit. Uh, but this was, uh, this was out of the blue, right? And telling you that China is bad, not nearly as good as they thought. Uh, today, Apple gets hit again. And Apple gets hit because people are looking at the sales channel and saying, hey, there's iPhones on the, on the shelves. That's not normal. You know, usually they sell out. Chinese demand is not going to be as great, blah, blah, blah. Apple keeps, uh, you know, working back and forth, can't, can't get uh, up and over. Alcoa comes out after the bells today. Alcoa had, had a nice run up here, but what do they do? They drop 4.5%. This is in that XLB sector we were just talking about. You can see how they had the push. Well, tomorrow will be a good tell on that. Is that push going to last or is it not? We've already seen some damage with Yum Brands, well, to Domino's Pizza, and this one is not strong in China. They're having problems too, so it looks to me like it's more than just China. Big volume, sell it off. They're down after uh, they're down today, four and a half percent. The only one that seemed to perk up on earnings so far is uh, Helen of Troy. These guys, uh, the consumer durable space, uh, they're doing fine. On a daily, on a weekly, they're going to go back up and test this big bar off the top. I don't think they're going to be able to get over it, but they're going to get up there and test on it. Um, actually, they may. Let's see. What? Are, what? Are, because tomorrow's going to have volume, right? They're sitting at 94. It's 90. The top was uh, 99. So yeah, it's going to be hard. Uh, they may get a shot at it tomorrow, though. Uh, Google. Google hasn't been able to move the last couple of days. Uh, the only one of the big three moving is Microsoft. Microsoft coming out with uh, their Surface Pro and getting a little press on that. But the point to make tonight is that earnings that are coming out 
are being sold. They're not being bought. The bulk of those earnings are going to start hitting on Tuesday. You've got Intel. You've got J.P. Morgan. You've got a lot of big names coming out on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. And if this market continues to run higher into those numbers and they're selling those numbers off, well, that's after a big stretch. You can tell me uh, what's going to happen in that case. Moving over to Europe real quick, I want to look at those two. Uh, those had tried to signal a pullback, won't even pull back. Looks like our market, just on a different continent. In other words, they keep pushing. They don't want to live, give it up. They had big sell-offs. Now they want to buy them. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Well, you got two days of vacuum. There's no news tomorrow, very little news Monday. Earnings on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Looks to me like you got a couple more days here. You can run this thing if they want. Uh, they're up about, uh, what, five days in a row now. So I, I don't know that there's anything to stop them uh, at this point. And what we've seen every day is just buyers coming out of the woodwork anytime there's any kind of intraday pullback. So we've had one, two, three, four, six out of seven days straight up and we've moved up and i'm on the s p 1871 at the low 2016 so you've moved up 140 points yeah 140 points in a very short period of time and it looks to me like they're going to have a good shot of moving it another 20 you know another 10 points at least and uh, that probably is tomorrow. Maybe it's tomorrow and Monday, and it just hangs on Monday, and then you have earnings. So, you know, my take here is, is, is they're setting this thing up to fail, but they got a couple days to do it. And that's it for tonight. And thanks, as always, for joining me. Have yourself a great one. Tell a friend and tell two for me. I'm L.A. This is and was your daily Neo TA wrap. Have yourself a great night, and I'll see you next time.